Hey guys, Trevay here, and I have to read, so I'm just going to be reading to y'all. Take the zoo, switcheroo. Who's afraid of fourth grade? I won't be doing that. It's super interesting. But yeah, I have to read the whole thing, probably. I'm going to set him up for 20 minutes. Got the alarm. I'm going to turn it on. Sit down. Chapter 1. <laughs> Hurry up, Katie. Susan look, lock, or er, her, her best friend, Kate Carew. I'm just dying to find out what teacher I've got this year. Every year, Kate and Susan made this same trip on the day before school began. Even though Cherrydale Elementary School was closed and class lists were posted on the front doors, all the kids in town came to the school to find out who their teachers were would be. And which of their friends would be in their class. And back there. Katie picked up her speed. She was excited to find out who her fourth grade teacher was going to be. Girls, wait up, Katie. Kate's mother, Katie's mother shouted, following close behind them. As she raced toward the school building, Kate thought back on how she'd felt this last year. She remembered how upset she'd, she and Susan had been when they found their name was on the class 3A. That was Mr. Dirkman's class in craft. Dirkman's class. Mr. Dirkman was a strict test teacher in the whole school, but they had to survive Mr. Dirkman, Dirkman, Dirkman in third grade. Now they were going to be in fourth grade, the upper elementary school. Katie knew that fourth grade would be full of changes. In fourth grade, you got real textbooks to keep for the whole year, not just worksheets that the teachers handed out. The fourth, fifth, and sixth graders all got to play in the big yard and run without swings. In the big yard. The one without the swings and seesaws, plus the upper school's yard had a real baseball diamond in a soccer field. But the most exciting thing of all to Kate was that this year she could sign up to play an instrument in the beginning band. Katie wanted to learn to play the clarinet just like just like her mom had. No doubt about it. Fourth grade was going to be awesome. I sure hope I get get Miss Sweet. Susan huffed, and she ran. She's gorgeous. She wears this cool clothes and really funky high heels, not dorky old dresses and flat shoes, like Miss Dirkman. She's supposed to be really nice, Katie added. That's even more important than what she wears. Whatever Susan muttered as she reached the front door of the school. A crowd of kids was gathering around the door, searching the list for their names. Susan gra grabbed Katie's arm and elbow. A few smaller kids out of the way so she could reach the front of the crowd. Okay, let me see. Over, Katie stood behind Susan and tried to see over her friend's shoulder. I want to see too. There I am, Susan screamed excitedly. She placed her finger under her name, Class 4B. Miss Sweet, oh yay! Is my name there? Katie asked, still not able to see Lewis. Zoe Pinter's in my class, Susan continued, without. Wait, what? Where is without? Oh, without answering.
case question merchant and many boss bows too we've got jessica han and they at the computer with sam mcdonald mcdonald becky stearns her too and oh no oh no what katie astro jeremy fox i can't believe i'm stuck with him again jeremy he was kate's other brother other best friend how kate really wanted to be in class 4b how about me she asked again susan shook her head sorry kate you're in it for a kate couldn't believe it she pushed susan out of the way and looked at the list it was hard to see through all the tears that were forming in her eyes katie wiped her eyes yes it was true oh my god do you guys hear that it's my first song make any sudden moves yes it was true her two best friends were in the same class with the best teacher and she wasn't with them that was not fair you've got a new teacher miss Dutton, susan pointed out Katie didn't say anything. Don't feel so bad, Susan comforted her. You've got some cool kids in your class, too. Mandy Banks is with you and both Emma Servant and Emma Wimber. Gosh, we haven't been in class with Emma W since kindergarten. And uh oh, what? Katie demanded. What's the problem? Nothing except except what? Well, Susan said slowly, George, Brittany, and Katie are both in your class. You know how much trouble those two can be on their own. I can't imagine what they'll be like together. Katie groaned. George was a real joker. He thought he was the funniest kid in the entire school. And he probably was, except maybe for Kaden. He was pretty hilarious, too. She had a feeling that George and Kaden weren't going to be get to get along too well. Come on. It won't be so bad, Susan said, trying to make Katie feel better. You've got to Kevin in your class, and he's not so bad for a boy anyhow. He'll probably be trying to break another tomato eating record. And he is chosen in 4A too. He's a great soccer player. You guys might win a few games against us. But that didn't make Katie any happier. I don't know, she said. You still have Jeremy. He's the best soccer player in the whole grade. Jeremy, ugh, don't remind me, Susan groaned. You and I will still see each other all the time. Susan continued at lunch, recess, and after school. And don't forget, you and Jeremy will still have your Wednesday. day. We have 12 more minutes. Afternoon play dates. Afternoon play dates. Wednesday afternoon play dates. That was true. No matter what the other kids signed up for after school, she and Jeremy were always careful not to plan any activities on Wednesday afternoons. That was their special time to hang out. I do look forward to Wednesdays, Katie admitted. Wednesdays are going to be great for me, too, Susan said. That's the day I have my modeling classes. I know. You told me about it a zillion times. There was an angry tone in Katie's voice. She was kind of mad that Susan wasn't upset that they weren't in the same class. Miss Crew, can we go home now? Susan asked, not even noticing how angry Katie was. Katie was. Had, Katie had sounded. I can't wait to call Zoe and tell her the good news. Chapter 2. You need a dozen pencils, Miss Carew said when she and Katie were in the sanitary store in the Cherrydale Mall. Later that afternoon, the school had mailed each student a school supplies list so they can bring, could bring all their folders, notebooks, and pencils on the first day. Can I get the mechanical kind, Katie pleaded. I ha hate having to go to the sharpener all the time. 
Katie, they're so much more expensive than the regular ones, her mom reminded her. But she threw the pack of mechanical pencils into the basket anyway. You pick out two folders while I get your notebook paper in the next ASO. We are back up. And Katie began sorting through the cardboard folders until she found just the one, just the one she wanted. One had a brown and white cocker spaniel on the cover. She liked it because it, he looked like he looked a little like her dog Pepper. The other folder she chose had a big unicorn surrounded by rainbows and silver stars. Just then, Jeremy Fox and his mom turned the corner into the folder. It was a hi, hey, Jeremy Paul. What? Oh, yeah. I saw the class list. I'm really bummed that we're not in the same class. Katie smiled at Jeremy. At least one of her best friends was going to miss her in class this year. It really stinks. She agreed. But we'll see each other, Jeremy promised Ted. I know, Katie replied. So, how was your week at Sleepover Soccer Camp? Awesome, Jeremy told her. I really improved. I just found out I made the cheerleading, cheerleading, Cherrydale traveling soccer team. Wow, Katie congratulated him. Begin on begin begin on the traveling soccer team was a big deal. Only the best players in town got to be on that squad. I'm second string right now, Jeremy admitted, but that's because I'm one of these youngest players. The coach said, if I practice a lot, I could start a few games. Where did, oh yeah. Cool, Katie replied. Maybe I could practice with you during our Wednesday play dates. Oh, I can't play with you on Wednesdays anymore, he said. That's when the team practices. But we always, it's not my fault, Jeremy interrupted her. That's what, that's when the practices are. What can I say? Things change. Katie sighed. As far as she was concerned, too many things were changing. Why don't you hang out with Susan on Wednesdays, Jeremy suggested. I can't. She's got modeling classes. Jeremy shrugged. Can we pick another day, Katie asked? I don't know. I'm really... Katie... Miss Carew Car called out, interrupting Jeremy. Gotta go, Katie said. She didn't want to hear the rest of Jeremy's answer. Ouch, Katie cried. Her foot had gotten stuck in the bottom of one of the cardboard displays. Bam, she tripped and fell. The display flipped over on top of her and she fell to the floor. Hundreds of colorful cardboard folders showered onto her head. Katie sat there in the middle of a huge pile of folders. Jeremy tried to hard not to laugh, but he couldn't help it. She looked hilarious. Katie glared up at her. Suppose best friend in squad. It's not funny, she told him. It kind of is, Jeremy told her, biting his lip. I can't already imagine that. That would actually be funny. As Katie started to get up, Jeremy burst out laughing. Katie looked over at Jeremy and rolled her eyes. This day stinks, Katie mind. Katie frowned. I don't want school to start, I wish. Katie was about to say she wished she never had to go to school, but she stopped herself. The trouble was wishing was sometimes they came true. Katie knew all about what happened when they did. It had all started one day at the beginning of third grade. Katie had lost a football game of her team, ruined her favorite pair of pants, and let out a big fluff in front of the whole class. It was the worst day of Katie's life. That night, Katie had wished she could beat anyone but herself. There must have been a shooting star over her head. When she made that wish, because the very next day, the magic 
wand came. The magic wand was a wild tornado that blew just around Katie. It was so powerful that every time it came, it turned her into somebody else. Katie never knew when the wind would arrive, but whenever it did, her whole world was turned upside down. Hold on, guys. Okay, I'm back. No way. Oh, yeah, was, was... Oh, no, you're here. Oh, I skipped today. Okay, so I brought chapter three. Katie was quiet all through dinner that night. She didn't feel much like talking, so Katie, are you all packed for school tomorrow? Her father asked as they were eating dinner. I guess so. She got a great new backpack, Katie's mom told her husband. I always loved the first day of school, Katie's dad would call. Hold on. We missed about 15 minutes, so. Okay, I guess. So, she got a great new backpack. I always loved the first day of school, Katie's dad would call. It was so exciting. Meeting my teacher, getting a nice clean desk, and seeing all my friends again. I won't be seeing my friends, Katie told him. That's not true, her mom reminded her. They're still in your school. Plus, you've got some of your old friends in your class. You'll make new ones, too. I don't want any new friends, Katie explained. Katie, that's just silly, Miss Carlos replied. Sometimes it's good to make new friends. What if Mr. Gunter is mean? Guthrie Gut is mean. What if he's strict like Miss Duckman? Miss Crew laughed. Oh, I don't think anyone will ever be like Miss Duckman. She's one of the one of a kind. Kate frowned. I don't want to. Yeah, I already did this one. Okay, that's a football game. What about what about what about? Magic wind came from trying to someone else. Katie never knew when the wind would arrive, but then never the whole world was turned upside down. Switch your room. The first time the magic wind came, it had turned Katie into Speedy. Class three, a hamster. While Katie was Speedy. She had escaped from the hamster cage and would wound up in the boys' locker room, stuck inside George's stinky sneaker. Luckily, Katie had switched back into herself before George could even step on her. The magic wind came back again, and after that, once it turned her into Luke Looker, the lunch lady Katie had started a food fight and almost got luckily Fired. Fired. The wind had also changed Katie into other kids. Like Jeremy, Becky, and Susan, baby sister. He said. That time things got really awful. Susan had tried to change her di diaper. Good thing Katie had stopped her just in time. Once the magic wand turned Katie into her dog, Pepper, Cocker Spaniel, Katie had chased a really nasty storm to Morris Sturkman's yard and had destroyed her teacher's favorite ball statue. The Sturkman had definitely not been happy about that with the switcheroos. Just kept on coming once it turned her into Miss Turkman, another Miss Turkman. Another time it turned her into Jeannie and Mimi. Her science camp counselor that had been kind of scary, especially when Katie got all of her friends lost in the woods overnight. Then there was a time the magic queen changed Katie into Lily. The owner of the pizza place, Alice, at a Tardale Mail, she'd spent an entire afternoon making pizzas for 
Louie's big pizza eating contest. Katie was glad her ma- mother hadn't known about that. Katie wasn't exactly actually allowed to use an oven yet. For the moment, it's guys. I know one thing you can look forward to this year is through reminded Katie interrupting her memories of the magic and her cooking lessons. Cooking lessons, Mr. Crew asked. Katie found out that Jeremy had soccer practice on Wednesday. That's when they usually have a play date and Katie was upset. Miss Peru explained. So to cheer her up, I took her to lose as a pizza. Okay, that's still on a Wednesday afternoon cooking classes. Louis, Louis, for some pizza. Louis told us about a great cooking class for fourth graders. They're giving it at the community center. We went right over and signed Katie up for Wednesday afternoon cooking classes. Mr. Carew looked his lips hungrily. Mmm, I can't wait to taste all of the new recipes, he told Katie. Just think, maybe someday you'll make pizzas as well as Louie does. Katie sighed, if her father only knew. Chapter 4. By the time Katie arrived at the school yard the next morning, the class is put on, guys. I forgot to tell you, show you guys a picture. This picture was for chapter 3. By the time Katie arrived at the school yard next morning, the classes were already lining up. She looked over at the line for classes B. Susan was busy showing off her new jeans, black ones with silver zippers, all over. To the other girls in classes, 4B, Broom and Zoe seemed really impressed. Katie used, usually hated it when Susan showed off. Sometimes she even walked away when Susan began to grab. But today, Katie headed straight over to where Susan was standing. Nice pants, she admitted the best friend. Teacher? If you have this book and you're reading it right now, I am on page 21 right now. Actually, not 21, 22. Thanks, Susan replied. She looked at Katie's blue sweater, plaid shirt, skirt, and red high tops. Didn't you have those sneakers last year? She asked Katie. Katie shook her head. These are new ones. Very full size, bigger. Susan shrugged. Unimpressed. Hey, shouldn't you be standing with class at 4A? They're over there. She pointed over to where the kids in Katie's class were gathered. Katie couldn't believe how cold Susan was acting. Even though they were in different classes, she was still her best friend, right? See you after school, Katie muttered as she walked away. As Katie got into line behind into line behind Emma, Debbie, her stomach started doing flip flops with Susan and Jeremy over there. And her over here. She was really afraid to start fourth grade. Hi, Katie, and all of you said in her quiet, shy voice. Hi, Katie, replied the quiet softly. Emma studied Katie's face. You wish you were in that class too, don't you? She asked knowingly. Kate, Katie nodded. Jeremy, Susan, and I were always together until now. Anyways, I'm aside. I know how you feel, Jessica, and I have been in the same class since preschool. Now she's over there, and I'm over here. It's going to be so weird. Just then, George Green, Brianna, came charging up to the line. Hey, Katie Kazoo, he greeted greeted her. Katie grinned a little. She couldn't help it. She really loved it when George called her by the super cool nickname he had given her. Hi, George. Do you know Emma? She's in our class this year. Cool, George said, smiling at Emma. Did you have a good summer, Katie asked. Yeah, George explained. I went to this awesome beach resort that had a circus. 
to school for kids. I learned how to be a clown, and I got to try swinging on a trapezoid. Wow, Katie was impressed. It sounds like fun. It was. I wanted to stay there forever. You know, run away. You know, run away with the circus. Sometimes I feel that way too, Katie agreed. Do you know what happened to the kid who ran away with the circus? George asked her. Katie shook her head. What? The police made him give it back. What? The police made him give it back. George chuckled at his own joke. <laughs> Katie and Emma giggled too. Nobody told joke, jokes like George did. Hayden was standing just behind Katie. And George, he didn't laugh at George's joke. Instead, he told one of his own. What do you know? called a spoiled tightrope walker, he asked Katie. What? An acrobat. Adam laughed so hard he almost fell down. Get it? George found. I get it? He said in a nasty voice. I get it. Like, I think he means like, I get it. I don't get it. <laughs> oh my god. I really don't get this. I was like, I get it. And I wish I could give it back, he turned to Katie and Emma. Now do you want to hear a real joke? Why was the human cannonball fired? Because he was acting like a big shot. Oh, I get it. You mean cannonball fired. I actually don't get it. Caden finished George's joke for him. That's an old one. George's face turned really red. His eyes seemed to bug out of his head. Katie gulped. George was really mad. Susan had been right having George and Katie in the same classes. class. Wasn't a good thing at all. Come on, George, Katie said, trying to steer him away from Katie. Come inside with Emma and me. But that was not, that was my joke, George moaned. He stole the punchline. It's okay, she whispered to him. You would have told it much funnier. That seemed to make George feel better. He followed Katie and Emma into the school without saying another word. Oh, wow, Mandy Banks exclaimed as she walked into class 4A. Check this out, Emma S. agreed. This is a close room, Kevin Calmer declared. He turned to Katie and George. Nothing like this jerkman's room. Oh, jerkman's jerk? Yeah. Yes, I'm going to do that to me, Jeff. I actually do. Jerkman's room. Is it? Katie nodded. The room definitely wasn't anything like neat orderly room Miss Dirkman had prepared for them when they arrived in third grade. The desk in class 3A had been arranged in even straight rows. The walls had been almost bare except the posters that said things like check your work and learn to ask questions. Miss Dirkman didn't like anything distracting in the classroom. She definitely wouldn't have approved of Class 4A. This classroom was totally wild. The bulletin board had been covered with neon colored paper birds. Each of the kids' names had been written on a bird. Kate's name was on a yellow bird. Three more minutes. There were posters in the room, too, but they didn't seem to have anything to do with school. The posters showed kids surf, surfing, surf skateboards, bike riding, ski, ska, skiing, and climbing mountains. A banner that read, try something new today, was taking up over the blackboard. The classroom ceiling had been de de decorated with kites that were hanging from the light pictures. The words fly to new heights were written on the same on some of them. I'm just gonna say time's up now. There we go. Because I don't wanna have to get another one when there's not a dot right there. 
Um, I don't know where you can get this, but I think... Okay, this is called Kate Kazoo Switcheroo. Who's afraid of first grade? Super special switcheroo. By Nancy Krug, illustrated by John and Wendy. I don't know where you can get this from. But it's a lot of star book. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more. And I will be trying to make a part two. I think it will be tomorrow when I do the part two. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.